I just wanted to do a really brief video on this issue I ran into in Sigma Studio and that issue is with using the IIR coefficients within this particular uh, block here. So I've talked about what coefficients are in other videos. Obviously this isn't really necessarily meant to be instructive in that way at all. Um, but if you've tried to use this IIR table inside of this parametric equalizer block in Sigma Studio, you'll see that it doesn't, um, doesn't plot anything the way that you'd want it to. So all of these, um, and I have the bounds set because it seems to be finicky. Sometimes it plots something really like erroneous and sometimes it, it doesn't plot anything at all. So these are, you know, just a contrived Butterworth, whatever, um, shelf, but when I have this IIR table enabled, it doesn't show me anything, and again, sometimes it shows me something that just isn't right at all. I put those same coefficients into a different block here, which doesn't have an onboard plotting mechanism, and I'll show you just as an example that you should be able to see by looking at those coefficients that they're not. It, the graph here looks like a pass-through, but these coefficients obviously are not a a pass through. That would just be a one here. But these coefficients are the same. And so this is another method here. This other architecture I have is another method to view your filter if you're entering your coefficients by hand, for example, and you want to see what your filter looks like. And this one seems to work. Um, so this is meant to be a high pass filter at 500 hertz. And you see, here's our 3 dB down point, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, 500 hertz. The system seems to look the way I expect it to now. So this is the one that's actually set up in the system. And just to verify that despite the fact that it doesn't plot properly, it still works properly, I took a measurement. Now, this is for a loudspeaker system. And so just with the measurement tools I have set, set up right now, the easiest thing to do is to just take a microphone measurement at the output of the speaker system. Uh, which is definitely noisier than a like pure electrical measurement would be. Um, but seeing as this is just a roadblock, I don't want to take all the time in the world now fixating on it and documenting it. So I just took this acoustic measurement here. Um, the top is a background noise in blue, and then with and without the uh, high-pass filter here. Um, so, you know, just to make sure we're not really encumbered by noise in this critical region. Um, you can see that some high pass thing is actually being activated when I use that filter section and then uh, here's the ideal filter response in orange and here's an unsmoothed uh, division between these two uh, lines. So this wasn't a time synced measurement, it's just a two power spectral densities referenced against one another. Um, so yeah, this isn't really, a, it's kind of like a transfer function. Um, but you can see that the system actually behaves the way I expect, despite the fact that it doesn't plot what I expect it to plot. Um, so that's all. Um, for anyone who's interested, you can use a tool like Octave to give you generalized filter coefficients. There's a couple of onboard functions. Butter is one, which I guess you don't really need. Um, I guess none of this stuff you really need. The Sigma Studio gives you a lot of the tools that you need. Um, but, like, for example, this gives you the filter coefficients. Um, but, you know, I like going back and forth from Octave to Sigma Studio because I'll be using something like Octave to take measurements and look at the data and compare different types of filters and convolve those filters with my measured data. And so using the IR coefficient block within analog devices or within Sigma Studio allows me to you know, make sure that I'm getting the exact same filter that I was playing around with in Octave. So, yeah, that's all.